Aida was written by a Frenchman who, at the time he wrote it, was director of the Egyptian Museum at Bula. When Verdi received a synopsis of the plot, it interested him greatly. It was done into French prose and then translated into Italian verse, which Verdi used for his libretto. It was originally intended to produce the opera in the fall of 1870, but the costumes and scenery designed by French artists were held in Paris during the German siege. The opera was finally given on December the 24th, 1871, in Cairo, Egypt. Verdi already was famous throughout Europe, and this opera so far surpassed his other offerings that it made a tremendous sensation. The story of Aida is simple in construction and consistent and logical. Aida, daughter of the king of Ethiopia, is handmaid to Amneris, princess of Egypt. She is in love with Radames, an Egyptian soldier. At the beginning of the opera, Radames is appointed to lead an army against the Ethiopians, and after the campaign against them, he returns victorious bringing many captives, among whom is Amonazro, Aida's father. Radamant is placed to guard Amonazro, and, persuaded by Aida, agrees to allow him to escape. Amneris overhears the plot, and in spite of her love for Radamant, she, in her jealousy, causes him to be arrested. He is tried for treason, and is sentenced to be buried alive in a vault beneath the Temple of Vulcan. The last scene shows us the vault in which he is entombed. Aida has secretly entered the vault, and as the tomb is sealed, she dies with her lover. The scene given on the reverse side of this record by Marie Raffold, Giovanni Sanatello, and Grand Opera Chorus occurs at the very end of the opera, and is one of its most impressive portions. It is a continuation and conclusion of the duet, O Fatal Stone. Above the tomb in the temple of Vulcan, priests and priestesses are chanting. This is the chorus which you hear on the record. Below, in the semi-darkness, Radames and Aida have finished the first portion of their love duet, and as the pollution of the air in the tomb brings them the first symptoms of their coming death, their voices blend in the lovely, haunting farewell o earth. This is one of the sweetest, most tender melodies that may be found in any of Verdi's operas, and it is justly famous. Marie Raffold, prima donna soprano of the Metropolitan Opera Company, made her operatic debut at the Metropolitan Opera House in The Queen of Sheba. Her repertoire is large, her best-known roles being Elsa in Lohengrin, Elizabeth in Tarnhäuser, Eva in The Meistersinger, and The Forest Bird in Siegfried all of which she sings in German. Of the Italian operas, she has sung with success Our Edith, Inez in La Fritana, and in French, the roles of Nicola in Carmen and Marguerite in Faust. Giovanni Sanatello is one of the greatest dramatic tenors of today. He was for four years the leading tenor of La Scala Milan, and for six years the idol of the public in Buenos Aires. He appeared in New York City at the Manhattan Opera House and in 1916 became one of the leading members of the Boston National Grand Opera Company. It is said that Senatello has no less than 57 operatic roles in his repertoire. He was recently knighted by the King of Italy for his distinguished operatic work.